Hey guys, welcome to 1 John 4. Now they're starting to speed up now because there's not as much here as there was in John. But the information is very important. 1 John 4 is no exception. It is very important. Key verses are here that you've heard people say before. We're going to get right into this because I'm running late today, which I didn't for, forgot to set the clocks. So I looked at my clock in the morning. I was like, oh, okay, cool. It's still morning. No, it wasn't. Not at all. <laughs> Beloved, do not believe every spirit. You guys know this one. Well, here it is. So if you haven't marked it <laughs> or, or have it uh, marked or, or noted, here's the one you can you can quote to people. And it's, this is a very important one for our time. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, they may not be your, your picture of a Christian. But let me tell you something. I have done this with people before. I have taken them and asked them, okay, did Jesus come in the flesh? And they cannot answer the question. Or they will refuse to. There was one lady who was claiming to be a prophet of God or being used as a prophet of God. And the woman was a lunatic. Watching our videos, she's an absolute lunatic. There's something very wrong with her. And so in a live stream on somebody else's video, I was calling her out. Did Jesus come in the flesh? And it took like seven tries, but finally she answered. Well, I found out later, somebody else was on her account answering for her. She was answering on one account. Somebody else was answering on another account. Because the spelling of the name of the channel was just a little different. So there's two different people, her and a friend of hers, which was shocking to me because that just shows that she's not who she says she was. Now, I've asked her other things too about who is Lord. And she kept asking, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, Who's Lord? Did Jesus walk on this earth as a man? A series of questions to find out what, and she couldn't answer them. Any born again believer immediately knows what the answer is. So this, there was a problem with this woman. But most people can tell you, yeah, Jesus w was killed on the cross and he rose from the dead. He was a real person. A born-again believer knows this. If anybody can't uh, uh, profess that, there's a problem with them. And it should cause red flags to raise up immediately when they fail to answer this question. If you ask them a simple question, is Jesus Lord? And they stumble over the answer. If you ask them a question like, was Jesus a real person? And they stumble over the answer. Did Jesus really get raised from the dead? And they struggle with the answer. There's a problem there. Right away. It seems subtle. It seems like no big deal. But that is an indicator given by John, here in 1 John 4, to watch out who you're dealing with. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God, no matter how much of it like a Christian they look. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. So when you run into somebody like that, and you're having that conversation, and you ask them that, and they struggle with that, or they start to ask you questions, well, what do you mean? What, what, what are you trying to get at? I'm asking you a simple question. Did Jesus come in the flesh? And they won't answer that question? You tell them, according to 1 John 4, you're an Antichrist. You're an Antichrist spirit. Well, how dare you? How dare you touch one of God's anointed? You're not one of God's anointed. That's the problem. You're condemned. You're condemned by your own speech because you can't confess Christ coming in the flesh. <clears throat> well, you want to watch a demon come out then? Yeah, there you go. That's when exactly when it'll happen. You are of God, little children and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. That means they don't confess. They confess self instead of Christ. They confess self instead of salvation. You'll hear that in those megachurch preachers. They confess self. Your best life now, uh, you can have this, you can have that, write your own ticket with God, all this garbage. It's all garbage. These people have completely wasted their lives because they just wanted to make easy money. And Christians are a great source of easy money. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. 
We are of God. He who knows God hears us. How many people have you met that deny the apostles, deny Paul, deny Peter, deny John? I've heard all three and more. That's a problem because they're not hearing these men like John is saying they hear us. If they don't hear us, there's a problem. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Very easily you can tell because if a person in some way denies the New Testament, partly or in whole or whatever, you know you're dealing with somebody who's got a problem. And that's a person to be marked and avoided until they can repent. Beloved, verse 7, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Love is the key ingredient. It's the key element. The key one. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. This is an extremely important key verse in the Bible. If you do not love, you do not know God. How many people out there are not <clears throat> loving? How many people who claim to be a Christian are not loving? I'm not condemning anybody. The Bible is. This is what the Bible says. And I've had people do that to me when I've pointed that out to them in their own channels or in comments. Who do you think you are to tell me I'm not saved? I said, I didn't say you, were, you weren't saved. The Bible says you aren't. The Bible says you are not of God <clears throat> because you don't love. You don't have to listen to me or believe me. The scripture is telling us. Look at the scripture. If you don't look at the scripture, you are going to suffer. And it's because of your actions. You can get mad at me all you want. I don't care. I don't take it personally. Because I know you're not directing this at me. It's you're directing it at God. Because you're mad at his word. Because you deny his word. And he tells you, if you deny my word, that here's the result. John is pointing this out very clearly. In this, verse 9. The love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. There's your gospel. Right there in verse 9. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. This, is, this will link you back to John 3, 16, 17, and 18. Right there, verse 10. Verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is a sign of who we are. This is a sign of whether we're his children or not. Love. Verse 12, No one has seen God at any time. That includes now. These people who say this, they are liars. They are liars. Nobody went up to Kenneth Copeland and said, have a cookie, unless it was a demon. Nobody went up to that other dude where he laid in the grass, and Jesus laid in the grass next to him, staring into his eyes very deeply, and them laughing at each other, and God standing over them laughing. No, it did not happen. That is a lie. Those are demons. They're visiting demons. I had one person on this channel, I, I, they were talking about their dreams, and they were kind of getting on to me. And I said, listen, I said, the next time you talk to this entity you're talking to that you think is Jesus, mention Jesus Christ's name. Because I'm venturing, I guess, you've never mentioned Christ. Well, how, how would I question him? How dare I question him? I was like, listen, the Bible tells you to do it. So the next time, just mention, did Jesus Christ send you or are you actually Jesus Christ? And see what happens. And he, he responded back. And he said, you were right. It was a demon. He goes, I, I cannot believe this has happened to me for so long. He said, I had a dream the other night, and I asked, are you Jesus, or did Jesus send you? And he said, the look, the horrible, twisted, gnarled up look on their face, and then they disappeared. He goes, I've never seen such hatred. I said, that, you were talking to a demon. You were talking to a demon. And that's where most of these people are talking to demons. And they don't realize it because the Bible says Satan can show himself as a being of light. And it's no wonder that his... No wonder that his followers can do the same. Demons can show themselves as beings of light. They're not like, like the movies show them all twisted up and dark and demonic. 
they look just like other angels because they are other angels. So we have to be careful. Test all things, just like the first verse says. No one has seen God at any time. Verse 12, if we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. You cannot live and be a part of God without the Holy Spirit. And we have been, or sorry, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior to the world. These are the apostles that have seen this. No one else, no other quote-unquote self-imposed apostles on this earth. The first qualification for being an apostle is you must have seen the risen Christ. Well, since no one else has seen Christ since he ascended, save for Paul and John, no one else. There are no apostles today. Those people are lying. You cannot be an apostle without this qualification. It's the first qualification. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. They were standing there with him. Verse 15, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. That's another question I asked. Is Jesus the Son of God? And you'd be amazed at how many Christians cannot answer that question. What are you doing? Why are, why are you asking me this? It's a simple question. It's a yes or no question. Is Jesus the Son of God? And you'd be amazed how many people will refuse to answer that question. People that call themselves Christians. It's a great test. It's a great litmus test. Why can't you why can't you say yes? Why can't you say he's the Son of God? Are you a demon? Because only demons are in that situation. A true Christian has no problem and with no hesitation will say, yes, he is the Son of God. I've had people respond with, well, he was. What do you mean he was? Well, he was the Son of God. What do you mean he was the Son of God? He is still the Son of God. And then I proceed to ask them, because they're trying to trip me up, proceed to ask him, is he alive today? Well, no, he's with the Father. Really? So life was in him, and he rose from the dead and was transfigured into a being that can live in two different dimensions at once. He's not alive anymore? Well, we don't know what he is. Yes, we do. He's alive with the Father right now. Well, how do you know that? Because that's what the Bible says. Have you not read your scriptures? See, we're dealing with the same problem today as they dealt with back then. The people didn't read the scriptures. They didn't know the scriptures. Or if they did read them, they just didn't know them. Same problem. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. You cannot do it otherwise. You have to have, have him in you in order to confess this. It's a great test. Verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Simple. Verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Listen closely. This is an important secret hidden in plain sight. Love has been perfected among us in this. Remember the other place in the Bible, in the New Testament, where it talks about love hasn't been perfected if this exists or that exists? That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Well, listen, we're going to have to know what's going on and be bold in that, well, I have the Lord. Because I'm getting the impression they may try to, not, not God in them, but the demons of the judgment may try to get one over on us. Well, it ain't going to happen because we know who we are. We know who we serve. So we will have boldness on that day and it will be based in love. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Now, listen, you're still going to have some fear, but not fear of God. You're going to have fear of other stuff. Perfect love will cast out fear. When you have attained it, you'll know that there's no fear. The fear will disappear. And when fear does try to come in again, because demons are trying to mess with you, it, it's gone. Because your own conscience will try to mess with you. It's gone. But the Bible says this, conscience, so stop trying to convince me otherwise. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. We don't have torment. We don't have condemnation. Those who are in Christ are now no longer under condemnation. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So if you're a new Christian or you're a Christian that's still struggling with fear, read your Bible and you will learn. And you will be made perfect in love. Verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. I didn't have the ability to love God or Jesus Christ until they gave me the ability to love. And it was when they loved me first that I was able to receive this ability. Verse 20, if someone says I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. How many people have we seen on YouTube, especially back in 2019 and 2020? How many people have we seen when they were just openly attacking us? for everything, do this very same thing. And they started to figure out, well, I need to put, um, I'm sharing this with you as a brother. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this in a loving way on their comments, but they curse you in their comments. And I would tell them, I would respond to them, you can't put that at the end of your comment and then curse me in your comment. That's a, that's a double negative. They contradict each other. If someone says, verse 20, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. You are a liar, You're, you don't love God. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? See, if the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. resides in the individual, then... If the Holy Spirit resides in the, sorry that message messed me up. If the Holy Spirit resides in the individual, lost completely lost my train of thought. Um, and you love that individual, you love God by loving that individual. Because when we see God, we when we see another person, we see God, we see Jesus Christ. When we see a brother or a sister, we see Jesus Christ. When we do things to others, we're doing that to Jesus Christ. Jesus made that clear in the book of Revelation. You, did you visit me in prison? Did you give me something to drink? Did you give me something to eat? Did you clothe me? Did you comfort me? Lord, when did, when did we do these things? When you did it to any of these, any of the people that are on the earth with you, you did it to me. Even to the least among you. Now that's just not just talking about other believers, it's talking about unbelievers too. So we are to be kind to those. We are to respond properly and accordingly to those that are around us. It's an amazing thing. It's an incredible thing. But when you love another, you're loving God. We haven't seen God. We haven't seen Jesus. I know a lot of people say they have. No. The Bible says you haven't. When we love our brothers and sisters, when we love our neighbor that's the golden rule. Love your neighbor. We are loving God. And what we do to them, we're doing to him. If someone says, I love God and hates his neighbor, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. There's another one of those 150 plus commandments. It all falls under faith and love. Right here, when Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments, you're hearing it from John directly. Go back to the previous chapter, last three verses. John gives us the criteria for testing ourselves and others. We merely have to read it. See, a lot of people skip over John's writings. There's a lot here. Very important stuff here we need to read in its proper context. And that's why we're doing that now. This is an encouragement thing for people. This is an encouragement video series for people. And it's a video series you guys can use for evangelism. And you guys know you can use any of my videos however you want to. Even people who cut them up and try to make me look bad. I love it because what that's going to do is people are going to see that and go, I want to go hear what that guy has to say because I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. And then they've come here and they've heard what I had to say. And I've had many of them comment and say, you know what? I don't think it's by accident that I came over here. I think the Lord was pulling me away from them. I was like, thank God he did that. Thank God he brought you into the light. 
I'm glad when they do that because it's free advertising for my channel. And it brings them here so they can get some real truth and real scripture. And many have come out of the darkness into the light because of it. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's incredible. I love it. Share my stuff with everybody. This video series is for that purpose. And it's going to be in a playlist all by itself, so you can share the playlist if you want to. But that way you can easily find it and reference it. Because we're in a time now where the spiritual battle is at an all-time high. So it's important for us to stay on top of it. In doing so, we show our love for God. In doing so, we worship our Lord and glorify Him. Because we desire to stay in the truth. Guys, that was 1 John 4. Tomorrow... 1 John 5, it'll be the end of 1 John. And he continues the thought and gets into some extremely important stuff here as he ends this book. And it's probably going to freak you out. <laughs> because he, he just keeps going. And it's, it's beautiful. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.